What's going on, 49er faithful, 49er fam, 49er gang? It's your boy, 49er Dion, back here with another video. So the last video, you know what I'm saying, I hit y'all over the head with them wide receivers. So this video, we're going straight into the tight ends on the squad. So definitely, before anything, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on the post notification so I can keep you up to date on any and everything San Francisco 40 motherfucking night. So with that being said, let's get right on into it. So, tight ends on the squad. We have five tight ends currently on the squad. George Kittle, Ross Dwelly, Charlie Warner, Daniel Helm, and Chase Harrell. Now, the first three dudes that I named seem to be a lot. The other two dudes that I named seem to be on the outside looking in. We all know George Kittle made to the squad. There is no question, no doubt about it. This is the last year of his rookie deal, and we are doing everything we can to get him signed, people. George Kittle will most likely get a deal that will net that will give him at least twelve to sixteen million per year. The reason I state that is because he is worth every fucking penny. The thing is, is we will not break the bank on George Kittle if his agent pulls a bunch of stunts. The thing is, is Kittle is one of those humble dudes who likes to play football, man. He loves to play football. You've never heard him complain. If we ran the ball the whole game and never not, never threw the ball once, he would never care. Run it again. You've heard him say that on several different occasions. He loves blocking. I mean, the man blocks like an old lineman, for God's sakes. So, is Kittle worth every penny? Yes. But will we break the bank for him and pay him like $19 million a year? No. This is not about to happen, people. If you are thinking that we are going to break the bank for George Kittle, you are sadly mistaken. And I do apologize. But the thing is, is at the end of the day, the NFL is a business, y'all. Flat out, it's a business. And you have to think what's good for business. In this business, we have a salary cap. So with us having a salary cap, then we need to make sure that we are well within that cap to be able to pay other players. You have to think about it. Next year, we have George Kittle. I believe K-Wan's up. I think Fred Warner's going to be up. Um, we got Kwaski Tard up. Like, there's a variety of other players that we need to go ahead and sign and make sure that they get paid as well. And we can't break the bank on one player and then say, oh, well, this is it. This is what we're going to do. So, do I believe we get Kittle signed? Yes. I believe Parag Marate will work something out where Kittle will get a deal that will reset the tight end market. But I still think tight ends are still going to get disrespected. And nobody's going to get what Kittle gets paid. He'll probably have a record-setting contract. But from what I hear, he was offered $14 million and it was turned down. I can tell you right now, that was his agent, bro. If, you, if you're if you a tight end and you get offered $14 million per year, there's not a tight end in the league that makes that money. Travis Kelsey doesn't even make that money. He's the best tight end in the league. I think he's making 10, 9 to $10 million per year. So you got to think about it. Even Austin Hooper with his contract, he's still not getting paid more than $10 million. I mean, maybe a little bit more, but you got to think about it. The, the tight ends don't get paid bread like that because they're tight ends. But because George Kittle is a tight end and he's a great blocker, you got to pay the man what he's worth. I say, you know, no more than 12 to $16 million per year. And if his agent decides to pull a bunch of bullshit, George is going to have to go ahead and look at him and say, hey, Stop with the fuckery. You know, I, I want a contract. I want it now. I want it to be fair. I want it to be reasonable. What are they offering? All right, that's cool. Take it. I'm not, I don't have time for you to be trying to get me some ridiculous-ass deal. And then I wind up on a fucking shitty-ass squad not winning no games because that's the only team that can afford to pay me because you're supposedly looking out for me. I can give me a deal here and then give me another deal later on and be with the winning squad rather than to be on some loser-ass team in a crap town doing nothing. That's what George is going to have to do if his agent continues to pull stunts. But, I mean, he's already signed through this year, so at a bare minimum, you know, he's our starting tight, he's our starting tight end. We all know this. Um, right up, right behind him, Ross Dwelly. Now, Dwelly's more of a catching tight end. He did fill in for Juice a little bit this year at fullback when Juice went down. Um, do I like Dwelly? Yes. I like Dwelly because of his versatility. He can block and he can catch. He's not the greatest blocker in the world. He's a little bit better at his pass catching. Um, and you use Dwelly in pretty, you know in different situations. But for Dwelly, for what he has, he's serviceable and he's cheap, to be honest with you. And if George decides that he's going to wind up 
you know, in a situation where he lets his agent, you know, try to run the fucking bar so high that he can't do anything, we'll tag him and trade him. I can guarantee you, and I don't want George to leave. I don't want any of this to happen that I'm speaking about, but this is a business and we have to do what's best for the team. If you think about it, why do you think we kept Eric Armstead over DeForest Buckner? DeForest Buckner wanted to get paid Aaron Donald money. DeForest, De DeForest Buckner was a three technique. He played three technique. That is what he played. We were not about to give him Aaron Donald money because he didn't do what Aaron Donald does. So what happened? Hey, we traded him for a first-round pick, and we went ahead, and he went to Indy, and he got his money. Blessings to that man. Blessings to his family. I'm very happy he got paid, and hopefully he can help Indy to go ahead and you know, win some games and do some things for him. But he wasn't, Aaron Donald money was not warranted for the play that he has exhibited throughout his career. Um, but I understand as well from a player's perspective, you got to get your money while you can because the older you get, the cheaper they want to go on you, man. They want to find somebody younger and cheaper. They want to get you one contract. You have to get that big-ass contract. You have to get the most guaranteed money you can. And, you you know, you have to take advantage of it here in the here and now. So I understand it from the player's perspective, but I also understand it from a business perspective from the owners, you know, and from the GMs. You have to do certain things. you got to make certain moves. Sometimes it hurts, but it is what it is. But look what happened with Eric Armstead. He, he, he wasn't tripping. We gave him a fair deal. The man got money. The way his, his, way his contract is structured was solid with that. Like, there's no issues. Eric Armstead just said, man, hey, I do a lot of work in Sacramento. I don't want to leave these kids and all of the stuff I do for the community. I just want a good deal, a fair deal, and hook me up. And Eric Armstead's agent went ahead and got it. He came to Eric Armstead. They signed. Boom, we got him. So, um, George Kittle and Ross Dwelly, to me, definitely can make the squad because of both of what they do. Ross Dwelly, because of his serviceable uh, pass-catching ability. You know, any event that something were to happen to Kittle, um, and then we got Charlie Warner. Now, Charlie Warner, if you look at his stats from college, his stats were shit. He was mainly a blocking tight end. I believe they drafted Warner to take the blocking role away from George Kittle and to go ahead and put George Kittle more in the passing game and then turn him into a better Travis Kelsey. Mark my words, Charlie Warner will not be catching no goddamn footballs. He is a great blocking tight end. If you don't believe me, go watch his tape from Georgia. That's what he does. Georgia is a power running football team, and Warner was a great blocker. So I believe that Warner's going to take over the blocking duties for George Kittle. George Kittle will start to catch more balls. The issue is, is that we want to get Kittle signed before the season because if he comes out and has another explosive season, that is only going to drive his price through the roof. So hopefully us and his agent can get something worked out where he doesn't have this ridiculous ass season, drives his price through the roof, then we have to fuck around and tag and trade him because he's just unaffordable. So that's the case. Daniel Helm, Chase Harrell, camp bodies to me. I don't see them making the squad. We're not going to keep more than three tight ends. Um, if we do have a tight end that we you know that we do want to really stay on the squad, I can tell you right now, um, you'll probably see maybe one of them get stashed on the practice squad, if that. But I don't really know much about either one of them. And I can tell you right now, just the, those three dudes, Kittle, Dwelly, and Warner, those are the ones that make the squad. You have to have a backup pass catcher behind George Kittle, and you have to have a blocking tight end um, that will be taking the pressure off of him as well. That is going to be Warner's job. Now, I'm telling you, mark my words. So the issue with that is that puts Dwelly a little bit on the bubble because he doesn't block as well as George. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't block as well as Warner. So his pass catching ability is great, but then again, do they say, okay, we're going to keep putting, you know, we're going to keep him and just make him one of those inactive guys because we now have the option to have more people active on those days. So you never know. But I can tell you right now, if we keep any tight ends, it'll be Kittle, Dwelly, and Warner. And if anybody is on the outside looking in, even though he knows the scheme, he knows what we need to do, and he backed up uh, – he backed up Juice in a, in a formidable fashion. It would be Ross Dwelly that would be the guy um, that probably might be on the outside looking in because of Warner's blocking ability. But that's it for the tight end. You know what I'm saying? I'll be back here with another video. We're going to go ahead and jump into the old line, which is stacked. I'll be back.